We are high above the Pacific Agriculture Show here in Abbotsford, BC, on top of a very important machine to the fruit industry. This is a berry harvester. It's a big one, and we're going to hear a little more about it from Brian Foote of Oxbow, the manufacturer of it. Brian, do berry growers need some very specific types of harvesters? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Oxbow's had equipment in the lower mainland for over 25 years. There's just getting to be less labor pool available to do it by hand. And with the size of the farms nowadays, you're, to make money, your only choice is to go mechanical. Oxbow makes five different harvesters for the berry industry, starting from a small pull type unit that you pull behind your tractor and ranging up to a unit of this size that could be used in multiple crops for both raspberries, blueberries, or blackberries. We're up here on the second floor. It's a very large area. Tell me what goes on up here. So basically, you have a set of picking heads that are, we'll say, downstairs because we're on the top, and they're going to go over the plants and pick either the raspberries or blueberries. They're, they've brought up to the top to where they're cleaned, and we have a fan that blows from the bottom and one that'll suck from the top, and it takes out the dirt and the debris. Uh, then the fruit comes across these belts to where it's inspected put into a container and then we have all this room up here for storage. You could put up to five pallets on this machine so growers with really long rows they don't have to stop and unload near as often. They're able to pick more acres in the course of a day. So how many people would actually work here during harvest? You're looking at a minimum of three and generally a maximum of five. And it's going to vary depending upon the volume of fruit that's coming that day. So is this the Cadillac end of the harvester, one of the big guys? It's the biggest machine we make. It's going to handle the most volume and it's going to have the most storage capacity. We make a smaller unit that's kind of more middle of the road called an 8000, which is a single drop unit. But we, we get growers that are 20 acre range, you know, buying essentially the big machine, the 7420 model for efficiency because, you know, they have so much pounds per acre that they need somewhere to put it, whereas if they have quarter mile long rows, they're afraid that they're, they don't want to dump fruit in the middle of the row. They want to be able to get to the end before they unload. So that's a machine like this is going to be able to do that for them. Now is this machine unique because it does different types of berries? Yeah, you know, if you went back probably seven years ago, you'd find that a company would try to sell you a machine for raspberries and then another one for blueberries. With this particular machine, really all of our machines that we make, we offer different types of picking heads. This one utilizes an orb rotor head. It shakes the fruit in an oval pattern, and so you're able to use a head in raspberries and blueberries equally well. And so from a cost standpoint, growers only need to buy one machine for both. And so, you know, the initial cost might be a little bit more, but it's a lot less money than having to buy two harvesters. Brian, what do you see in the future for harvesting? Are we going to continue to get bigger with these machines? Uh, what will be the trend? We're currently, right now, we're able to use the machines for the fresh market if they're not shipping the fruit long distances. I think for the future, that envelope is going to be pushed even more to where growers are going to need to be able to pick more fruit for fresh market and be able to ship it long distances to like Asia and Japan. We're not there yet, but I think we're gonna, we're gonna get there. I think you're also gonna see just more automation on them. Uh, you have tractors today that you're able to utilize with GPS. That's technology that we could put on our machines right now. We have the electronics to do it now, but we haven't been told by the growers that that's something that's of interest to them. I think that we're eventually gonna get there. And it, you know, when you get there with GPS on the machines, essentially you're able to map the field and then at the end of the day, the machine's just going to drive every row and turn on its own. You know, this could be 10 years out or it could be 20 years out or it might never happen. It's just going to depend on what the growers want at the end of the day and if it's something that fits into their needs, essentially. Well, thanks for the greatest seat in the house up here, Brian. Uh, Brian Foote from Oxbow. From the Pacific Ag Show, I'm Diane Finstead.